Welcome to MoveMyBiz.com's webinar series, Ask the Experts, where various office relocation industry leaders share their insights, stories, and experiences. In this edition, we have Matt Watson of Apex Facility Resources. Matt is the owner and VP of development at Apex Facility Resources, and he has 20 years of industry experience. All right. Okay. Without any further ado, it's uh, Matt Watson from Apex Facility Resources out of Seattle. Welcome, everybody. Well, I think that we talked briefly and we touched on the team. And the team and clarifying roles and responsibilities is a, is a really uh, important aspect of this. I, I think that there's an internal team and there's typically an external team that every company that has to kind of engage to get a relocation um, to have a successful relocation, and even as a, as we start working with clients closer, the employees of the organization are are called upon to play a role. And so, you know, the for instance, the internal team. You know, we usually see successful organizations and successful moving process. You know, having an executive sponsor, and then also, oftentimes HR, IT, and facilities. Now, if it's a smaller organization, maybe office manager plays and wears all those hats. The, in the cases where the, there's a smaller organization, and I'd say smaller all the way up to 200 employees, that's about the point where people start hiring facilities management or facilities technicians. But ultimately, those people who have to wear all those hats, this is an extremely challenging scenario because research shows that 70% of the time when organizations are moving and people are faced with those responsibilities in addition to doing their regular day job, that they'll either quit or get fired after the move. And so it's a real scary proposition for um, somebody who's trying to do this single-handed. So that internal yeah. team is, is really important. Um, then there's the external team. Go ahead, Larry. Well, and, and again, I mean, that's, you know, people always, you know, when, when doing the research in this and talking to, uh, you know, dozens of professionals that, that you know, um, help companies with the relocation process from different angles is that <clears throat> it could be devastating to companies. Um, we interviewed uh, somebody last week that it was a smaller business um, that really made some very critical errors and, and unfortunately that was the, the tipping point um, to, uh, you know, to, you know, that company uh, didn't survive. Actually the whole company didn't survive the relocation. So. Um, Again, I think it's really important, uh, can't overemphasize uh, the importance of getting started early, um, and not just with the commercial realtor plays a role, but um, the commercial realtor is, you know, about the leasing, not necessarily, that doesn't necessarily make them an expert in space planning, right, or understanding how the workspace functions. So um, I think it's important to engage folks that sort of understand that uh, very early in the process. And to to talk about the leasing side a little bit, many of the leasing and the brokers that we work with see that that's not their core competency and do partner and strategically partner with organizations that can support the various aspects of the process, the workspace transition process. So um, it's an important partner, the leasing aspect is, but you're right, they're they're not necessarily workspace strategists or specialists, they're really, they're job is to get the best possible deal for the lease space and the, in the best terms they can get them in. So, And they try to pack as much as they can into the tenant improvement or the TI allowance. And really, again, going back to workspace strategy, if you don't know your strategy, you don't know what your TI allowance will need to be. So it's really kind of, I'd say about 60% of the time, organizations are going into that negotiation process, which could result in millions of dollars of lease payments over five to seven or ten years without a really solid understanding of their strategy and that what's needed as far as workspace infrastructure or build out. So so that comes back to also that team and part of the other part of the team is, you know, the external team which starts with the broker and sometimes the architect or the designer, but it also rolls into the construction manager and then the project managers start showing up in the various verticals or the various support vendor groups. So IT and phones would be, you know, there, there'd be services there. Furnishing, there'd be services from a commercial interiors company. Uh, relocation, 
obviously that's what we're talking about today, but the integration there is sometimes important. And then liquidation and disposition in North Space closeout, what we also call lease surrender. Those are also, I mean, if you think about it, you probably need five to seven, most people look at this and will say they need five to seven different uh, vendors to do the work. What we're starting to see now, and I think we're seeing it in all industries, is kind of the those who integrate things together. And I think that's a good thing for people to think about when they're watching or looking at their commercial relocation process or their workspace transition. Cool. So, yeah, so I think that um, the on the internal side, one of the real um, challenges that we find many customers have is how do you communicate the process to the employees? Um, Larry, I don't know if you've heard stories and research on this, but you know, people flat out sometimes are faced with uh, you know the employees uh, you know you know revolting at times when they're not included in the process. Uh, yeah, I, I've definitely seen that you know throughout my career, even uh, you know um, where people um, you know get upset because somebody has an office and they don't, and you know where they're positioned, it it, it can get uh, you know. Uh, and issues about how far the new location is from you know where they live, and I think that uh, the worst thing that you can do because I, I've I've seen it where I was there during the relocation, you know actually the the final process, and and you can either have some very happy employees or some very uh, angry employees, and that's one of the things that that I realized just as a strictly a commercial mover and furniture installer. Uh, was the attitude of the employees when they walked in that first day um, after the move. And, and in general, it's either going to be very negative or, you know, very positive. And, and more often than not, it's, it's, it can be a negative thing. So I think, you know, what you're talking about here is really important. Right. So we kind of look at the, we kind of help clients and also learn from clients that, you know, in every case, it's, it's kind of, trying to manage the fears of change and or the fears around change and again another pre generational pre uh, you know preference or or observation is the fact that many of the older generation literally fear change um, the younger generation are more open to it you know in the today's world of technology and the way people have been raised and their learning environments everything is dynamic and always moving um, Somebody said to me the other day, and it was really true, um, the rate of change, if the rate of change outside of your business is greater than the rate of change inside of your business, then you will be out of business. And ultimately what, what's happening now is cultural environments are being designed around fluidity and a dynamic change. So moving oftentimes becomes less relevant or less concerning where customers are finding in a, in a very, um, I guess, traditional or legacy for, uh, uh, design formula, and some of these industries include law firms and maybe insurance companies. Uh, we've had some really interesting uh, experiences with more traditional industries where uh, clients are, and employees are just, have they been in the same office for 25 years? It's very traumatic to move. So how do we work through that? And starting early with our communication is the first thing we, um, you know, communicate with our clients and what we learn to have to, to basically st try to stay one step ahead of the questions. Um, the important aspects is explaining the whys around your moving and include the business drivers. You know, we're saving space, we're cutting costs, we're developing, developing a space to improve the life of our employee, you know, the, the, the life, you know, the work experience for our employees. And, you know, when, you know, like they say, when we know the why, we can endure any how. And it's important. I mean, this is a psychological process here, and it can make or break the move. Because the mover themselves, when it comes down to moving, they're going to rely on employees following the move packing instructions. There are packing instructions that, that every employee will have. And if you have a 1,000 employees and you have half of them not participating, it's a disaster. There's nothing the mover can do. So enrolling the 
employees of your organization early in the process, strategically giving them the whys around the move, including the business drivers, even answering, hopefully, the with them, the what's in it for me. And that may be personal benefits, you know, like I say, improved quality of work life, those types of things. And then also the timeline, what to expect and when. If you can answer those three, the business driver questions, the why, the what's in it for them, and the sharing of the timeline, the, the employees will typically be the greatest team to work with. And that's of the internal and external teams. The psychology of this game is really important. You have just watched part two of three of MoveMyBiz.com's Ask the Expert webinar series with Matt Watson of Apex Facility Resources. Go to MoveMyBiz.com for more webinars, videos, articles, checklists, timelines, and everything else for your office relocation.